Another step in the right direction for the Port of Baltimore. Yesterday, the first container ship arrived at the port following the Key Bridge collapse. MSC Cargo's Passion 3 ship passed through the 35 foot deep temporary channel before it had to close this morning as work resumed at the wreckage site today to try and refloat and move the dolly. And tonight, we are getting a closer look at one of the only simulators in the country that modeled the exact conditions the day the bridge collapsed to find out if it could have been prevented. WJC investigator Mike Helgren is live along the water in South Baltimore. Mike, what are you learning this evening? Vic, Denise, they ran a number of different scenarios and found without power there was very little the crew could do but warn those in the path of the ship. Now, tonight, the NTSB is just days away from releasing its initial findings. The 35 foot deep emergency channel, the deepest so far allowing access around the Keybridge disaster site, has closed until May 10th while responders refloat the dolly. The ship is one of the biggest obstacles to fully reopening access to the port. Crews will use this massive hydraulic grabber to pick up the remaining bridge pieces from the bottom of the Patapsco River after the ship has been removed. WJZ got a rare look at a simulator at California State University's Maritime Academy, one of only three in the United States, where researchers input the exact conditions at the time of the Key Bridge collapse. They found with a ship that large with no power, little could have been done to stop the tragedy. We could compare it to the perfect storm of accidents where everything that could go wrong did go wrong exactly where we would not want it to go wrong. Cal Maritime Simulator found containers acted as sails with winds pushing the dolly directly toward the key bridge. It took us about one nautical mile, so that's 6,076 feet, just to get that ship to be dead in the water with zero speed. The simulation systems are capable right, of introducing various mechanical failures and human errors. The simulator also found one of the few scenarios that could have prevented the disaster is two tugboats at full power pulling the dolly away from the bridge, something that would not have been common practice. It would have taken uh, two very powerful tugs to be able to slow that ship down. The FBI has opened a criminal investigation, and the Associated Press previously reported there were possible electrical problems before the dolly left port. An anonymous source telling the AP alarms were going off on some of the refrigerated containers, possibly indicating an inconsistent power supply, yet the dolly left on its journey anyway. Was you know, a total loss of propulsion and a total loss of steering a factor in this, um, which we know, yes, yes, it was. Now, the NTSB is focused on the ship's electrical system. They're also looking at the possibility of dirty fuel. The Unified Command tells us that they're still on track to open the main channel where the dolly sits right now by the end of next month. Live in South Baltimore, Mike Helgren, WJZ.